Hello everybody. In this video, we have another Corel puzzle, Corel 3A. All right, let's get going. So in this one, unlike the other one, the puzzle is different every time. You see here, I'm trying to get from one side to the other side, but the barriers I need to cross randomly change each round. So the code I write needs to work no matter the configuration of these barriers. So I'm gonna log into my Scratch account. I'm gonna to go to the starter code. The link is in the description below. I'm gonna click Remix. Here are the instructions. This is the video you're watching right now. Here are the instructions to remix, which you've already done. Be sure to change the name of your project and save. So in the instructions, it says to click the green flag. I'm gonna do that. And it says to click the green flag again. And when I do that, you'll see that the map changes every time. So my solution can't be hard coded to one particular map. Just as before, you're gonna write your code here. And just as before, you're only going to use certain blocks. You'll use the makeup blocks. The repeat and repeat until. The if and an if else. The greater than, less than, or equal to operators. And the front is clear variable. That's it. Nothing else. So now we'll show how front is clear works. Front is clear right now is true because Corel could move forward. The front of Corel is clear. Here, front is clear is false because the barrier is in the way. Front is clear is false again because the barrier is in the way. Now front is clear is true because Corel can move to the next spot. All right, so the next step is to create a custom block that turns right. You've done this before, so I'm going to zoom through it really quick. I'm going to make a custom block. It's going to be called turn right. It will be composed of three turn lefts. I'm going to test it out. And when I test it out and it works, I can move my custom block out of the way and move on. So the instructions say I want to move along the ground until I hit a barrier, and then I want to jump over that barrier. And I want to keep on going until I hit 9-0. So my first thought is to ignore all that. So just move up and jump over all the barriers. So that's the solution I'm doing right now. But when I save it and auto grade it, it gives me a 5 out of 25. So this is not the solution we're looking for. We're looking for a solution that involves selecting between two scenarios. The first is if the front is clear, and the second is if the front is not clear. And to do that, we're going to use ifs and elses. So we're going to get that if-else block because we're selecting between two scenarios. And then we're going to check to see if front is clear is true. So we're going to get the operator equals in there. Front is clear equals, and we'll type in true. So if the front is clear, that is there's no barrier in front of me, I should just be able to move. So I will pull the move block in, put it in the spot, and let's test it out. So I have all these maps where the front is not clear, but in this one where the front is clear, it moves as I expect. So now let's work on a scenario where the front is not clear, where front is clear is false, or there's a barrier in front. So for this one, I'll make a new block. I'll call it jump because I'm jumping over the barrier. And then I'll pull it in and put it inside the else. So I'll use jump when front is clear is false. So then I'll make jump. It's like a turn left, move, turn right, move, turn right, move, turn left. Something along those lines. Let's see if that's right. Yeah, that looks okay. So now you see I've used the if and the else to select between two different scenarios. One where front is clear is true. That means there's no barrier and I move, and I tested it already, and you saw it worked. And if that's not true, we have a second scenario where front is clear is basically false, which means there's a barrier in front. It's gonna do the jump. I tested it, and you saw that it works. So now I'm gonna use the part to make the hole. The lab says I need to keep going till I hit nine zero. So all that means is I just need to repeat this nine times. So I'll pull in the repeat. I'll repeat nine times. I'll move my jump out of the way. I know it works, I tested it. Make my code more readable. And now let's try it. And it looks good. So if you've done the rest of these labs, I'm sure you can auto grade this yourself, so I'll skip that part for now. But I wanted to end by pointing out why we're doing this. The main thing I wanna show here is by using custom blocks, we can take big problems that can be hard to solve and turn them into small problems that are doable and testable. We tested the move, we tested the jump, and once we tested them, we can put them all back together at the end to form the solution for our problem. And that is the main point that I wanna get across in this lab. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.